And hello people watching this rant and um, we'll get into basically everything but quickly I want to do a brief history of Square Enix especially on the mobile or more specifically the iOS platform. Now Square Enix um, in I guess recent history has been known to have some of the more pricier games but in my opinion most of them were justified because they were high quality games but we'll go back to the beginning so uh, Square Enix has a lot of um, I guess smaller type of titles like this game called the Rivers Run Red and it's just a quick kind of castle control um, I guess is the type of gameplay and um, it's just kind of a little bit casual I mean gets difficult and stuff but that was like at a five dollar price tag if I'm correct and honestly it's a lot but this game really gives you a lot it's not just game it does have a little bit of a story and it's just nice so really for five dollars you get what you want now there's a whole bunch of little titles but what square enix is really known for on the ios platform is their big big ios platforming games and i guess they're on android and everything else too but they are known for just bringing really great games so like final fantasy one and two remakes along with three and other ones but before i get a little too ahead to myself um we'll just grab that so one and two remakes were at a 8.99 price tag which again it just kind of raised the bar of how much money uh app or i guess a game should cost but if you're a diehard final fantasy uh fan then really this the price justified itself it's a remake of old classics and it's not on anywhere else so i mean why not so that's the one and two now three again raises the bars it makes the price go to 15 and again very rarely does games any games go to 15 dollars and this is a remake of the what is it the ds final fantasy 3 that just like barely got released finally in like u.s years back but this is um a more enhanced version so it has better graphics um i think that's really about it just some better graphics visuals and the sound effects are just kind of um rammed up a little bit so they sound a little bit better but that's it but still it's still kind of justifies the price the game i guess for ds cartridge or whatever it still costs around probably 30 because there's not a lot just kind of out there i could be wrong it might be cost less but for 15 dollars and a remastered version of number three it still justifies itself now me um it's again it's kind of shady already 15 dollars is a pretty steep price tag especially just for ios game now a series that i love of square enix which i'm a diehard fan of is uh chaos rings and chaos rings one was the first app when I got it, um, that cost a lot for me. Uh, when I got it, it was $12, which was almost unthinkable at the time. And I just took a gamble with it, and I'm so happy I was. This game, in my opinion, revolutionized what an iOS game should be and feel like. And it's just extraordinary, it's just almost revolutionary. Now, the other, I guess, sequels could be said to have less of a dramatic effect, but they still had the quality that would entitle them to the price. So Chaos Rings Omega, which is a prequel to number one, came out um, within about a year or so after the original. And um, I believe it was about $14, $15, if I'm correct. Now, um, again, it was a large game. And some people could debate about, oh, the graphics weren't really changed up too much. And the story plot wasn't changed up. You could debate all that, but I'm just talking about pricing here. Now, for what you got, this game actually, in my opinion, surpassed number one in content. Not so much story-wise, the story was close to second, in my opinion, but content-wise, you really got what you got out of this one. And within a year or so, again, Chaos Rings 2, the official sequel, came out. Now, this game, again, you could complain and stuff about story elements or whatnot, but this game, um, I believe it was at the $17 or $18 price tag. And this game, I was a little bit more disappointed. Not as a fan, but for really what you got, it could have been a lot longer and a lot of things just seemed um, slack offish. And I was kind of disappointed that there wasn't just more. And that was just me on a personal note. I mean, $18 is 
again a steep price. I barely ever see any games reach that much on the iOS platform, and it's just almost mind-boggling. But still, I'm a Chaos Rings fan. I love that game, and so I justified it. But now there has been recent games that just been coming out with just it just baffles the mind almost, and it almost makes me rethink my um. Not situation, but opinion of Square Enix on the mobile gaming market. Now, their more recent games have been more console quality and more prone to, I guess, hardcore gamers, I guess, if you will. And because of that, they think the price can be justified as almost the same amount. So these games, these three games, I guess, I'm going to talk about have the most outrageous prices of any iOS gaming and probably just handheld gaming market, I mean, like, ever. They're not full console games. They're close to them, but they have almost console-like prices, and just almost outrageous. So the first one we got here is Drake Rider, and this game looks amazing, but the issue I have is that they offer it as a free... Um, not free to play, just free, I guess, trial, but they don't say it's a trial. So you download this game thinking it's a full game. And again, I guess that's a stupidity on the downloader's part, thinking that something so amazing would be free. Well, the issue I have is not with that. It's with the price tags they add to after downloading the game. So you get a little bit of a taste, not that much of actual gameplay. And then it's just basically... Here, buy all this crap. And it allows you to buy like the games and parts. And the issue with this is that it's just it just seems too much. Now, this is not too much of a steep ahead of Chaos Rings or the other games. This game had around a twenty dollar price tag. Now, it's not too outrageous to especially seeing what it has. Um it does have voice acting, but like Chaos Rings, um, it's Japanese voice acting with English subtitles, which I don't have a problem with and I actually kind of prefer. But it's just, for paying $20, it's already getting there and quite a lot. So now we're going to go ahead and go to the second Square Enix game that just recently released. And again, it's just, it was a free um, download, but you had to buy the game and other parts to get the rest of it. Now, this one is more mind-boggling and it really makes you think what like what the fuck anyways um it's Final Fantasy Dimensions now this game um if you're a long time Final Fantasy uh, fan then you will know where this game comes in and what it offers and everything it brings now it really brings a lot of I wouldn't say original things but it just has a lot to offer and a lot of content but it's at a price and again, like, I don't know if this pricing, they just made it for iOS or like if this game were to release on other consoles, would it be the same price? But at the end of it, after downloading all the chapters and whatnot, it'll, it comes out to $29, basically $30. Now, again, nothing on the iOS or mobile gaming platform even comes close to touching this. It's just a full console game, but just not on a full console, like, system it's it's ios platforming it's quick fun games i like how some games of square enix were getting deep and they're just really good but to justify just oh this is console like quality so we'll give you like console like price it's just i don't know what to think of it and 29 is already bad but that's not even the worst the worst being demon score now this game has been in development for quite a lot while just like Final Fantasy Dimensions and people have been following it but no one knew it was going to hold up the price tag that they did and Team Score is definitely one of the games I've been just watching for about a year and it's Square Enix game that is, was made with the Unreal Engine and just it just looked amazing and um reading into it it just it sounded like a great game now this game isn't free to download. It comes with the $7 price tag just off the bat. 
but even after buying the game, you don't actually get the full game. And this is the most outrageous of all Square Enix's games and prices. After paying $7, you play through the game to basically find out that you you could beat it, but it'll be it's a, okay, let me backtrack. It's a rhythm game where you cap and attack and stuff. And that's just really generic, but that's what it is. And just buying it from the original price of $7 without upgrading it or buying anything extra, you can only play the game to a single repetitive song. And it just goes from boss to stage, from boss to stage, from boss to stage. And all the cutscenes are just generic. Now, if you want to change it up, you have to basically beat a boss and pay a $2 or $3 price tag to get the boss's powers to change up the story and change up your character as a costume. Now, for what it offers you, I guess it could be justified. Not only is it changing the music, but your character gets new costumes and new tags and whatnot. But that should just come with the game in general. You're playing the game to beat the bosses and you get their powers. You should get them automatically. Why is there a price tag to get something that you accomplished? And there's almost no progression in the game because they did that. Now the issue isn't even that. The issue is after playing the game and trying to buy or if you did buy all the costumes and all like the boss um, power ups. Basically, it comes to $37. Now, let me repeat myself. If you want to play the full version of this game, it comes to $37. And that's not... There's even more stuff. There's, um... What was there? There was the $10 extreme hard mode. And then there's various items for smaller amounts of money. But still... If you wanted just a full game without any of that extra stuff, it was $37, not counting all that other shit. And it's just at a certain point, you think to yourself, wow, are you kidding me? And a lot of people are just commenting and talking about this. And it's just almost mind-boggling. $37 is the point when you have to really stop and think about it. And I don't like how... I mean, where this is going, um, I doubt Square Enix will do pr price drops anytime soon. So, I, I'm i pretty sure this is the price. This is how it's going to stay. If no one downloads it, then no one's downloading it. That's how it's going to be. And it's just really mind-boggling that it just come to this. Yes, these games are high quality. Yes, they're good. And they could kind of be justified by the price. But again, no. I'm fine with the $15 and even $18 price tag, but for $18, it has to be the fucking shit. And for, I mean, going to $20, $27, and then like $37 is just over ridiculous. And I really don't even know what to say. Like, I would say, oh, I wish like on a good note to that, oh, hopefully they, we band together and try and drive the prices down. But no. It's never happened before. Why would it happen now? This game is going to cost what it costs. And it's just going to stay like that. And it's just really mind-boggling. And um, I've been really looking forward to these games. And just been waiting for them. And now I'm kind of, not depressed. But almost frightful to see what Square Enix comes with next. Because I don't want to see another steep price tag. That I just can't justify buying. And so that's just the epiphany, I guess, of the rant. It's just, at a certain point, you just have to open your eyes and say, uh, it's not worth it. And that's really sad because these games look and just feel amazing. And I really wish I could just <laughs> play the full games without some kind of steep price tag. And this is kind of generic for every iOS platform game. In some way or respect, there's usually always some kind of price tag snuck in there but nothing so steep has ever even been attempted as far as i know as a 37 dollar price tag on an ios gaming platform game and i guess that sounds a little bit repetitive but so is the price tag of just raising amounts for almost no reason but anyways that's 
pretty much the end of the rant. I just want to talk about it, and I guess other people are looking into this shit and just finally asking themselves why, why. But um, that's about it. So like and subscribe or do whatever that YouTube great stuff or whatnot. And um, I don't know. Leave your comments, and I guess we could discuss how um, we can discuss um, just prices and what you think a justifiable price is for a Square Enix game whether it has I mean it's a brand or not what kind of price do you think is too much for an iOS game anyways uh thanks for watching and um stay tuned there might be other stuff who knows